Hey guys, Matt here, rcgroups.com. Sitting in front of you is the cutest and coolest little charger you'll ever see, the ISDT Q6 Plus. Now I picked this one up from ReadyMade RC, the leaders in FPV and FPV goodness. And uh, I got it from them at the Toledo show. I saw it, I had to have it. It's uh, priced right. I think it's between 70 and $80, something like that. I'll give you the exact price in the review. But the cool thing about this is that it's a 300 watt charger and it can push out an astonishing 14 amps uh, to charge some of those big packs, hammer charge, anything you can put in front of it. Now you will see I've got some scratches in it and that's my fault because I've been using the heck out of this little thing. It is my go-to car charger. I leave it in the car, uh, throw it on the back seat, use my um, power panel that I have in the back of my truck to hook right up to the XT60 that's into the side of it here and charge some single lipos if I need to. So it does have an XT60 input, like so, XT60 output, balance tap, and a firmware port here. Now the only thing it did not come with was a firmware cable and USB dongle. I wish it did. It's only $6.99. I wish they would include it. They can add that to the price. It would just be one thing I did not have to order. So on the back here, you'll see a massive fan inside, massive at least for this little frame. And it comes on usually at around 10 amps. And it, um, it really does a good job of, of cooling it. Now here's the case that it comes in. There we are. Inside of it, besides the unit that sits nicely in there, you pull it out, and you've got some XT60 so you can make your own leads if you want. You could also make a uh, some sort of adapter for using different types, JST, uh, Deans, things like that. But I really do like this thing a lot. It actually works surprisingly well for its size. Uh, again, it's available at ReadyMade RC. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a charging sequence and we'll see what this little guy can do. All right, let's use this gigantic flight power 4S16000 as power for it for right now. You don't need this size battery to power it. Any uh, 2S to, what is it, 6S pack will work for input power. So what we'll do is just hook it up right here. It's instant on, there's really no load time. Does a fan check. And there you go, there's your beginning screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these options on here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in, so give me one second. All right, let's take a look at the main screen when you turn it on here. Zero amps are being put in right now because it's not charging anything. Zero milliamps have been added, no, no battery, no battery connected. 15.1 uh, volts input power, zero voltage of the pack because there's nothing connected to it. 22 degrees Celsius is the internal temperature of the unit. Uh, this is your gas tank cumulative sense boot. So when you plug it in, you're going to have this fill up in watt hours until, regardless of how many packs you put on it, until you turn the unit off, then it resets. Zero pieces, zero batteries, that is, have been charged since we turned it on. And this is cumulative overall, it never changes. So zero full charges. Now I've only used the Q6 Plus a number of times to storage charge batteries and do some testing with it, so that's why it says zero pieces. We're gonna do one today and show you how that sticks. Let's go ahead and move back to the beginning screen. This is your voltage per cell. Obviously nothing's in there. And that's it for right now. If I press this and hold, it's gonna take you to your task settings to set up your battery so you can change your cell count. Let's do that, obviously, all the way up to 6S. You can, and it, when you plug into the balance, that's gonna change accordingly to the, to the pack, so you don't even have to mess with that. Your current setting that you can change. Now, the only thing that's interesting is you gotta really scroll through this. There's no way to get quickly down there, all the way down to one, and back up to whatever, 7.5, we'll leave it there. Now, you have cell voltage, the standard 4.2. You can 
uh, really hammer charge them and add some extra voltage if you were so inclined. I wouldn't do that. We'll leave it right at there. Uh, your battery type, your LiPo, your LiHV, LiION, LiFE, lead acid, and NiMH, all the standards. And then your select task, you get charge, discharge, and storage. So it's going to always balance and charge and balance discharge if you're plugged in the, um, the balance tap. And when, you pr when you want to go back, do so. Now if you hold, you go into the system settings. Your maximum input power can be 330, 320, or 310, or on down. Actually, it goes all the way down to 50 watts. This is the maximum that you can put through it, and that will save your battery if you're using a low-powered uh, battery. So you have your minimum input voltage. This will also save your pack and shut the unit down if the input voltage drops below a certain voltage. Here we have 7 volts that's really low we don't want it that so we're going to put it at uh, 13.5 volts backlit you can change that volume you can change that completion tone repeat and language english firmware sharing you can share that to another unit and then your system information it shows our firmwares as well as system self-check if i press this it's going to go through and check everything Fans are running. There we go. And then back to the main screen. Let's go ahead and charge a pack. I'm going to charge this Turnigy Graphene 1300 milliamp 4 cell standard pack for drones and uh, some fixed wing planks, things like that. Let's go ahead and charge it at 2C and go through a cycle. First, I'll plug it in. Let's get the balance tap plugged in first. You'll see right here that your negative, and then there's your negative on that side. So obviously it goes down like such. Let's plug this in. There we go. And battery gets plugged in. Now right off the bat, we have some information that popped up. 3.8 volts per cell. This pack is nicely balanced. Um, we've got 15.3 volts of the pack here, and that's it. Now we will get some uh, milliohm resistance ratings once this thing starts charging. So press the button, go in here and change the current setting to 2.6 for 2S charging. Again, you got to scroll down 2.6. Updated to 4S, and we're ready to rock. We're going to press the button once. No need to hold it, just press. There we are, we're charging. Now the fan is not going to go on. It really doesn't go on until you put about 10 amps through it. We'll check that in a little bit. But let's uh, check back here shortly when this unit gets fully charged. All right, our charge is done. We put 709 milliamps back in. It took 19 minutes and 20 seconds. You'll see that it's just barely moving here after the fact, and I'm pretty sure that's because it's just equalizing the cells uh, after the charge. So we put 11.4 watt hours in. The pack shows at 16.8 volts. We have 15 volts left in our, um, in our uh, input pack. And if we roll up here, we'll see the milliohms of each cell is around 4.3, 5.1, that's not bad at all. Pretty good numbers right there. And each pack, excuse me, yeah, each cell is uh, topped off at 4.2. So awesome charger, worked really well. Now it's time to really push the amperage and see how much the ISDT Q6 Plus can handle. Let's go ahead and do it. Now it's time to up the amperage. Let's go ahead and see what the Q6 Plus can actually do. I've got this Titan 60 amp, 1200 watt power supply here. This should put plenty of voltage to it. Got it set to 24 volts. So we'll go ahead and hook it up here like so. And now we're going to connect this Flight Power 4S 16000 to it. And since the maximum amperage out is only 14, we're just going to charge it at 14 amps. All right, we'll press the button once. 4S. 
2.6. Let's go ahead and max that out at 14. We'll see how the ISDT Q6 handles 14 amps. Go ahead and start task. There we go. Now if I roll down, I can see our internal temperature. We can monitor that. The fans should come on pretty soon. There goes the fan. You can feel the air coming out of it. All right, so we're, yep, there we go, 14 amps. That's the max that this unit can do. It's doing every bit of 14 amps. Let's keep an eye on it, and uh, hopefully it won't overheat. I don't think it's going to, not with that fan going, and it's only at 37 degrees Celsius. We're still rocking along, 46 degrees Celsius. After 12 minutes of pulling 14 amps, we've put 2,900 milliamps back into it. Alright, I went ahead and terminated the charge because there's really no reason in continuing another uh, 12,000 milliamps through this thing to prove that it does work. It can take the amperage of 14 amps all day. It really only heated up to about 46 degrees inside and that was it. Um, again, this is just a great charger. I really enjoy it. It fires up quickly when you plug it back in here. Instant on, there you go. And uh, it's, it's easy to initiate a charge. It's easy to make adjustments. I really like this OLED type screen here. Easy to see. Again, uh, just a great charger. You can get it for $50 on ReadyMade RC right now. And uh, I highly suggest picking one up, especially if you want to leave it in your vehicle or have it uh, in your backpack or something like that. If you don't need to charge multiple packs at once, this is a great piece of equipment. The ISDT Q6 Plus, available at ReadyMade RC. Thanks.